Good evening, everyone. I'm going to cover a few varied topics within this video today. Uh, a couple of people have put this up, but I don't know that they've ever went over it. I, I saw they listed it, <clears throat> so I don't know how many people have actually seen it. So I'll go over it with you. This is a, uh, a report about climate change and increases of earthquakes because of a, a cooling of the planet um, related to solar activity. Now, don't get all confused about solar activity and solar flares and everything because when the sun goes into a more of a cooling period, that doesn't mean it's not going to release any any flares or anything. So, what this actually says is the Space and Science Research Corporation, which is a leader in climate prediction, dropped the U.S. government's ground-based global temperature data from its list of reliable resources. They kicked it out because it was an unreliable source. This step has been made by the SSRC after an extensive review of the government's ground temperature data. There was wide divergence from more reliable sources of data, namely the satellite systems. And it has been found multiple flaws that it says render the government's climate data unusual, unusable. They further observed that the government, and specifically King Obama, routinely deceive us, the people, regarding the truth, the true status of the Earth's climate, what is causing it, and where is this going to lead us into. And in the past, the SSRC has used five global temperature data sets, three ground-based, NOAA, NASA, and HADRUT. two satellite sets, the RSS and the UAH. These sets are analyzed in an integrated picture of all five. Allows the SSRC to produce a semi-annual global climate report. And HADRUT, HADCRUT, excuse me, is a combined set from two UK science groups. And as of today, it just is, this is dated Monday, June 29th, but I actually saw this before then. <clears throat> the SSRC will no longer use the ground-based data sets of NASA and the NOAA, NOAA, because of serious questions about their credibility and allegations of data manipulation to support King Obama's climate change policies and the use of HADCRUT will also be suspended on similar grounds. According to Mr. John Casey, the president of the SSRC, it is clear that during the administration of Obama, there developed a culture of scientific corruption permitting the alteration or modification of global temperature data in a way that supports the myth of man-made global warming. And this situation has come about because of presidential executive orders, science agencies producing unreliable and inaccurate climate reports, and also with statements by the president about this climate that is patently false. An example, the president has said that global warming is not only a global threat, but it is accelerating. He said this this month. Georgetown University. He also said that 2014 was the planet's warmest year on record. In January, at the State of the Union address this year. Both the statements aren't true. He public re publicly ridiculed those who have correctly stated there's been no global warming for 18 years 
therefore nullifying any need for the U.S. government actions to control greenhouse gas emissions for any reason. As a result, the U.S. government's apparently politically manipulated ground-based temperature data sets can no longer be regarded as credible from a climate analysis standpoint. Until scientific integrity is restored in the White House and the rest of the government, we will henceforth be forced to rely solely on satellite measurements. Most disturbing, of course, is that the King, President Obama, has failed to prepare the country for the difficult times ahead as a result of the ominous changes taking place on the sun. Not only is the sun the primary agent of climate change, but it is now cutting back, getting cooler, on life-giving warmth, bringing a new cold climate period. We will all face a more difficult future, one which the President is ensuring we are totally unprepared for. After a lay hum lum, Professor of Physical Geology at the University of Oslo, Norway, and an expert of global glacial activity. He's a co-editor of the SSRC's Global Climate Status Report. And he adds, It is regrettable to see the politically forced changing of temperature data, which will, of course, lead to the wrong conclusions about the causes and effects of climate change. Recently, NOAA indicated that May this year was the warmest May <laughs> since 1880. But this cannot be verified by satellite, me satellite measurements, which show that May was in the average range for the month over the past 10 years. Also on page 41 of the June 10, 2015 GCSR, we noted but the temperature spread between ground-based and satellite-based data sets is now widened to a point that is problematic. The average in degrees centigrade among the three ground sets, ground-based sets, shows a 0 0.45 Celsius warming in temperature since 1979, the last 36 years. For the more reliable satellite systems, it is only 0 0.17. Celsius warming. This is 264% differential. Scientifically unacceptable and warrants ending the reliance on the ground-based data sets until some independent investigation of the variance resolves the matter. While the use of satellite data only will limit the depth of quality of the global climate status report, it will at the same time allow us to still provide the best available climate assessment and climate predictions possible using only the most reliable data. <coughs> Excuse me. So, think about it. What has been stated here by these gentlemen and their research and the data. If the sun is going to cool down some, Think about the little ice age. It doesn't mean the whole world is gone cold. It just means your winters are going to be colder than normal and last longer. But think about what they do to try and control the climate. They use their, their heart machines and other methods they may have developed besides that to try and continue to keep things, things warm from cooling, maybe. It is something to think about. They try to hide these things and at the same time manipulate everything into the way they want it. Also, <clears throat> I have watched this gentleman speak before. And it is also noted that... Um, Cooling of the sun seems to precede some large earthquakes. 
So it would seem that we have to factor in all the variables to how this planet is acting. Some is nature, some is man-made. But when we say man-made, we're not talking about us. We're talking about them, those who have the technology to control. There's a couple of other items I would like to show. I've seen also a couple of other people waving the red flag saying that they have shut Deagle.com down and that only specific people are allowed in. Well, I must be one of the specific people allowed in because I had no problem getting on it. And it's been a couple of weeks at least since this YouTuber put out a video alerting everyone that they'd shut it down. I don't know why he couldn't get on, but I have no problem getting on it. It is still showing. The United, this would be projection for 2025. It is showing America with a decrease of roughly 254,000 people gone. And we've mentioned before the reasons that they gave in their uh, summary why they base this. Financial collapse leading to other things that come along with the financial collapse, chaos, people dying during the melee of the chaos. You're going to have some nasty germs floating around. Supposedly some sickness and stuff will kill off quite a few over a 10 year period. So this is why they project that. Could this be what Jade Helm prepares for? Speaking of that, I suggest if you have not done so already, but you come over here to John B. Wells' Caravan to Midnight site. And I know there's a lot of you that say, eh, that's two hours and 29 minutes long. I don't want to watch that long. Well, you'll rent a movie on Netflix or at the video store for a couple hours and sit around and watch a movie. Don't you want to learn something? If you're interested to know, um, this woman has done quite a, an amazing amount of research in the technical aspects of Jade. Remember whenever I made um, a video not so long ago about Jade and I showed the document? And, uh, I spoke about it. And it seemed to me somehow that that was um, a technical type of a program which was taking information. And, and uh, remember, I said somehow it reminded me of Minority Report. Minority Report because they, they use um, kind of a predictive type of a technology that would predict somebody's going to commit a crime later on and they would go and get them before they did it. Well, this is um, apparently very similar to that kind of technology. It is artificial intelligence. And that is why that um, the military leaders will, will no longer, like I mentioned, but that I was thinking to myself, and she's stating that also, Military leaders will no longer be the ones to make the decisions. 
on how the battle is going to be carried out, where it's going to be, what they're going to use in it, and so forth. It's going to come from this artificial intelligence programming. So it truly is like, uh, remember the old chess matches? Where the world's top chess player would play the computer, see if he could beat the computer. We're just saying no chess match now. This so artificial intelligence is going to be able to have so much information in its brain. It's going to plot moves supposedly well in advance from what we can formulate ourselves. Supposedly knowing what we're going to do before we do it. And planning on how to react to us before we've even done anything. And that is something to really put your mind around and think about. Well, I think, it's just me, I think that the Jade Helm exercise is going to be the final piece of information that this artificial intelligence is going to need. I think Somehow it's making me feel like, kind of like Skynet on the Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Kind of like it's not fully governing itself yet. They haven't flipped the switch to where it's on its own. It needs a little more learning, a little more data. And I think this is what this exercise is all about. Instead of a laboratory setting, instead of a model setting, instead of all these scenarios within the computer world that it's been dealing with and figuring out and playing out, this is going to be a real life scenario type of a deal. With real equipment and real soldiers. Are they really going to do anything? I don't think so yet. I think they want the hardware out there to get their practice in with the real hardware and not the cyber stuff, not the cyber modeling hardware, for whenever they do decide to put this thing on fully automatic and go, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to actually have been used for a test trial out in the open among us already. So it's my suggestion that you watch this and that you listen very close and take notes and try and understand truly what this is all about. Because this is way, way, way more than just seeing rail cars with Military hardware on them and FEMA Roundup cameras. Way more than that. If you want to know about the destroyer, Gabriel's Fist, Proculibus, the 10th planet, Planet X, Nibiru. Also, John B. Wells has had Gil Broussard on. And this was a very complete presentation about the correlation between a large body, large planet or something, that seems to correspond with different events, much biblical events, floods, 
spouts, tilting of the earth, and so on. And he did a fantastic job, I thought. Zechariah Sitchin, he made an argument, and he gave us a story in the Sumerian tablets. I'm not saying that he got everything right. I'm not saying that he got everything wrong. I'm not saying Gil Broussard gets everything right. And I'm not saying he gets everything wrong. I'm saying I think both gentlemen have valid arguments to a degree in each of their presentations. But this one caught my eye more than anything that I've looked at that Sitchin has presented. Because when you came up with the time periods, And he asked the question about how could there be three hour eclipses. He gave a very good argument as to how that could be possible. So I suggest if you want to, to know what's out there, what it actually does. And possibly how actually more frequently it comes around than 3,600 years. You should watch this. And you should listen. Don't discount it. Nobody really knows what it is yet. We haven't been alive long enough. And tonight, in the sky, they're talking about the Bethlehem star, aren't they? How Venus and Jupiter are going to converge so close that it, it looks really cool, you know, bright. I don't know if that's really what the three wise men saw back then. But I do know that in the Bible, uh, the word star can, can mean more than one thing. I mean... I believe he's given the mystery of the seven stars, and he says there's seven churches, seven angels, right? If memory serves me correct. So he's saying that the stars are seven certain churches. But then at the same time, he's saying stars are angels. It's something to think about. Who said all those little bright objects out there couldn't be angels? Who says that this object here couldn't be an angel? Angels carry out their tasks as designated to them. And they do it happily and lovingly. If that's all one angel is supposed to do is... Come around every so often, if need be, shake things up, if need not be, things don't get disturbed very much. Something to think about, because I do believe it will be coming around again. Finally, here in my state, again, we have our Supreme Court ordering the removal of this monument, <clears throat> the Ten Commandment Monument. And remember, somebody drove over the other one smashed it. Isn't it odd that it wasn't being taken down until somebody smashes it? Now this one, they want it removed. The 
seven to two decision violates the state constitution. No public money or property can be used directly or indirectly for the benefit or support of any sect, church, denomination, or system of religion. No, no belief at all that God's law trumps man's law. And you remember when the Satanists wanted to put up their statue of Satan? And this other clown of a church, the flying spaghetti monster, petitioned to have something placed there too. So with the Supreme Court ruling on same-sex marriage, embracing conduct not allowed by our Lord, and then using man's laws once again to trump off respect of the very most highest God, the only one, that allows them to take a breath in voting to remove a monument in some of these old, the oldest ways of living given down which were written by the finger of the Lord himself our Father in Heaven. You can tell why he's upset with us. Because don't it seem like the longer we go, the worse we get. I mean, I'm trying hard to see our country, much less the entire world, getting better, not worse. But I can't find it. Can you find it? If you can find where it's getting better, not worse, drop me a note. And let me know. Because little sparse places where it's getting something to make you smile, where it's getting better, are really hard to find nowadays. Well, it truly is time for you to get closer with our Father in Heaven. If you were to die today, do you know in your heart for sure where you would end up? If you can give yourself an honest answer and say yes, I would end up in the kingdom of my Father in Heaven. Or you would say, I don't know. Or you would say, yes, I know I would go to hell because I haven't been good enough and I haven't believed. You can give yourself an answer. But whatever the honest truth is inside you, good or bad, you need Him in your life. Without Him, you're done. Benito. This is all you're going to have. Besides taking a burn when you leave this reality. It was my suggestion every day 
you make some time for him. You talk to him. You empower yourself with him. You get with Jesus. And you get yourself right. You get yourself strong. You get yourself forgiven. You get yourself reborn. Because it's, it's getting close to going home. What is a what is a year? What is five years in the span of time when there is no more time except eternity? There's no clock in eternity. It just is. We have the spirit. We have the spirit of Antichrist all over. When they're doing things like this, when we have Christians being murdered all over the world by ISIS, that's just one group, then that is the spirit of Antichrist. It is against God Almighty. It is killing the believers of Him. Anti, against, not for, Christ. Well, this spirit is growing more and more and more. And you have to know it. You have to feel it. You have to see it. It's all over the place. It's becoming a mindset where wrong is right. Bad is good. It's an anything goes attitude. Nothing's going to be punished because it's okay to do whatever you want. It's your life. It's your right. That kind of thinking. But there's a way bigger picture than that kind of thinking because you're going to have to answer. You know how much... Do these people know how much shame they're going to feel and humiliation when it comes their time to be in front of the throne, in front of Jesus. They'll be on their knees. More than likely, their faces will be down. They, they, they won't even be able to look at him, I would doubt, if they could. And nothing will have to be said. Because once they're there, they're going to know it's real. They're going to understand in a flash, I mean a super quick flash, that they were wrong. And all that humiliation and all the feeling of doing that sin and stuff is going to come over them. And it's going to overwhelm them. They don't realize that. Not now. And that's why we have to pray for them. We have to show them love, even though they... Maybe they don't show... I still try to show them the right things. Any love back. That's what Jesus said to do. He said, love everybody, you know, love your brothers and sisters, as I have loved you. That even includes enemies. Somehow, <clears throat> we've got to do what we've got to do to try and turn as many souls back to heaven. Take them out of the lake of fire or hell before there ain't no more time left for us to to gather any more up for the Lord. Well, I think you can serve yourself well if you'll listen to all the things that these 
these guests say when John's talking to them. And I think this lady here nailed it right on the head. I feel very secure that she's got everything 99% right, if not 100. So you all try to have a good weekend. Nice holiday. Oh, one little thing I wanted to add. I checked out an article. Um, I'll probably go ahead and list that link too. About the futures of oil. And this um, 55 to $60 range, somewhere in there, looks like this could go on for quite a while. And like I stated before, unfortunately the game is rigged to where when the oil barrel is down in that price range, that's bad. That's bad because people lose their jobs. There's over a thousand rigs that are not working now because of that. And with a thousand rigs, there's a whole bunch of people who got put out of work, even though the price of gas and still, you know, 250, 235, somewhere in there, 240. It is not equal to the drop of the barrel price. That's how they rig it. And I know the industry that I'm in deals with the oil field. And we have also just finally suffered the blunt of this decrease of the barrel of oil. So we are on a four-day work week. We're only getting 32 hours a week now. So if we want our hours to be back to 40 hours, the barrel's got to go up. Or all the industries in the supply chain are still going to be cutting back and not, not making as much purchase orders. And see, when you when you think you're getting a break, there's always a catch to it. Somebody suffers some way. And this was all manipulated. It was America manipulating with the Saudis to do this. And King Obama claimed it was to change the behavior of the Russian government and punish them. He tried to drive them into a depression. That's what it amounts to. And we are bowed down and kissed the butt of the Saudi kings and their Saudi empire because of the petrodollar so that we can try to retain our status as the world's currency that everything is traded in and Saudis can try to reclaim a larger share of the oil market to make more money for their kingdom of greed that is why the barrel fell that is why Russia's economy tumbled and that is why people got put out of work because of our illustrious, traitorous, satanic, dictator king in office. Well, I'll talk to you all again sometime soon, friends. I pray for you and all the world.